FBI investigates leaked documents. We don't want to see it repeated and we don't know who has access to it. On U.S. intelligence, Kaplan News goes live from our D.C. Bureau. A death-defying story. God, that's as best as I can really put it. Of surviving a natural disaster. And changing the field. You'll need to go to college to gain those skills. How obtaining college degrees could be threatened by AI. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Good morning, South Florida. I'm Julian Davis. And I'm Alonso. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. A security scare at the highest levels of the federal government involving classified information. They're labeled, quote, top secret, but they ended up online. A recent leak of highly classified U.S. intelligence documents is causing security concerns. Kaplan Samantha Gutierrez joins us live from Washington on the efforts to find out who attained them and how. The FBI, along with the Defense Department and several other agencies, are investigating a recent leak of highly classified documents. House Speaker Mike Johnson confirmed. The leak is very concerning. There's some serious allegations being made there, investigation underway. The documents contain what appears to be U.S. intelligence on Israeli plans to strike Iran. A source familiar with them told CNN they're authentic. Yesterday, the White House weighed in. The president remains deeply concerned uh, about any leakage of classified information into the public domain. Uh, that that is not supposed to happen, and it's unacceptable when it does. It's unclear how they ended up on Telegram and began circulating online late last week after being posted by a channel called Middle East Spectator. We don't want to see it repeated, and we don't know who has access to it who might want to repeat it again. The documents appear to be intended for only certain officials in the U.S., Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the U.K. Analysts say that the fact classified information ended up online could make Israel <sighs> hesitant to share future intelligence. Brad Bowman is a Democratic political consultant yeah. who says he is deeply troubled by the leak. He told me risking a wider war at a time when the Israeli government should be focused on negotiating a peaceful solution to the crisis in Gaza is playing with fire. The recent leak of the means and methods of uh, what Israel is intending to use in that attack uh, has sort of thrown a wild card into the situation. So I think the Israelis are going to hit military targets. Experts think the leak could harm American interests in the Middle East. Former Defense Secretary Cohen explained that the U.S. gets prior knowledge of Israeli plans because of the troops in the region, so they can stay safe in a response. Reporting live from Washington, I'm Samantha Gutierrez for Kaplan News. Extreme rainfall this weekend prompted hundreds of water rescues and killed at least two people, leaving dozens more hospitalized. As Kaplan's editor Dad shows us, a New Mexico first responder rushed in to help others when rising flood waters engulfed him. I am sitting on the roof of my cop car, my police truck. I am completely surrounded by water. Chavez County, New Mexico Sheriff Mike Harrington found himself in need of rescue as torrential floodwaters swamped his cruiser over the weekend. Those people here on the west side of Roswell, their, a lot of their houses are uh, flooded and their cars are flooded. The Roswell area hit particularly hard after a historical amount of rain fell in just a few hours, washing over roads and through neighborhoods, prompting hundreds of water rescues and sending dozens of people to nearby hospitals. I am sitting on top of my vehicle and a couple people who were walking through the water came and sat here with me. Sheriff Harrington and his fellow stranded motorists were among those safely pulled from vehicles or buildings amid raging flood waters. Flood watches and warnings persisted throughout the region until early Monday morning. And in the daylight hours since, the water has started to recede, revealing the full scope of the damage. Vehicles swept away, now piled up along roadsides or under bridges. A number of homes and businesses flooded out. As Roswell begins the recovery process, it does so having set a new record. The National Weather Service says Saturday's rainfall hit 5.7 inches just edging out the previous high mark set in November of 1901. Reporting for Kaplan News, I'm Anna Trinidad. While North Carolina rebuilds after the damage from Hurricane Helene, numerous efforts by the federal government help those who were affected. As seen as Maribel Gonzalez reports, FEMA has just announced more relief initiatives through a new program they have created. 
North Carolina grappling with the destruction left behind by Hurricane Helene. Sadly, we have 95 storm-related fatalities over 21 counties. The federal government approving more than $300 million in assistance and debris removal. And now more help is on the way. The government will create a brand new program for assistance. The Biden administration announcing a new community liaison program where representatives will serve as, quote, trusted messengers between FEMA and affected residents. This new aid coming as the Tar Heel state is not only dealing with damage, but also combating misinformation. Donald Trump is coming to Asheville today. I'm asking that he not share lies or misinformation. Former President Donald Trump continuing to fuel inaccurate claims about the federal response to Helene. In North Carolina's hour of desperation, the American people answered the call much more so than your federal government. Such claims North Carolina's Democratic Governor Roy Cooper dispels and says are getting in the way of helping those who need it. Many survivors of this storm lost everything. They want help and they want the truth. Last weekend, a North Carolina man was arrested for allegedly threatening harm against FEMA employees there to help with Helene recovery. To truly help people, we must check party politics at the door. I'm Mary Bell Gonzalez reporting. A 105-year-old woman miraculously survived after her home was destroyed by a tornado near Port St. Lucie. Jane Houston, born in 1919, was found in the rubble by her neighbors. Though she needed surgery for a foot injury and has a bruised back, she's alive and recovering in the hospital. Her grandson, Riley Houston, says it was probably the scariest time of her life and that her being able to tell the story today is a miracle. Miracle, luck, God, that's as best as I can really put it. Members of the community have also supported her with the resources needed for her recovery after being inspired by her story. Tua makes a major announcement about his career and his health. That's still ahead and so is the story. Around 50% of my uh, skill sets are based on actual classes, but also the other 50% is like research that I do. Self-learning versus getting a degree. College students weigh in. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. Art and Design Incubator is the velocity accompanying the fellow's rudder, as in a boat. Unless there is movement or action, the planned direction is of little consequence. We encourage the creative ideas into action, and from the experience of doing, we critically assess the feedback, adjust, and set out to rediscover the potentialities of an entrepreneurial mindset. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Computer science students making a degree decision. It's self-education versus higher education. And our very own Capital News reporter David Lascano takes a closer look.
With so many tools available to us, it's now easier than ever to acquire any skill or knowledge, especially with the rise of AI. Which begs the question, is it still worth it to pursue a college degree in this modern age? Today we're talking with students and professors here at FIU to discuss about the topic. The computer science field is one of the main demographics affected by this self-learning phenomenon. But not only that, the search of AI could be an unaccounted variable when thinking about their future. I actually know a few cases of people who have actually done more, a lot more, and learned a lot more about uh, programming than I have. And they are they didn't go to college. It isn't most skills are not. You don't need to go to college to gain those skills. Artificial intelligence is one of the most influential softwares in the last years that has raised many concerns about its impact in the work environment. I think you will always get a job. I mean, I don't see it 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. I don't see um, the machines taking over like, like the sci-fi movies show. Professor Baduelo states that he's not scared of artificial intelligence, but statistics show that AI has been on the uprise for taking jobs. Reid Hoffman, billionaire and co-founder of LinkedIn, notes in an article with CNN that in years to come, AI will displace humans from the workforce. Around 50% of my uh, skill sets are based on actual classes, but also the other 50% is like research that I do. While a college degree could still validate your skills and knowledge in the work environment, there is no doubt that being self-taught, it's a real, accessible, and sometimes even the best option for some folks out there. Reporting for Kaplan News, this is David Lascano. Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa is finally returning to the field seven weeks after a third career concussion. The injury sparked a lot of speculation. Some believe Tua would miss the rest of the season or even retire for his own safety. After his news conference, he put those rumors to rest, saying he returned to the game next week. I appreciate your concern. I really do. Um, I love this game, and I love it to the death of me. That's it. We'll see the quarterback play for the team next week against the Arizona Cardinals in a home game Sunday at 1 p.m. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. See us dream, see us remember, see us protest. You matter, your feelings matter, your identity matters, everything about who you are matters. See us fight back, see us rebuild, see us shatter stereotypes, see us inspire, see us united, see us now. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. And that's all the time we have for Newsbreak. I'm Emma Alonso. And I'm Joel Davis getting more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.